What's going on guys, I'm Mike Sabo and this is Dave Moore and today we're here at Dave Moore Racing and we're gonna build a 250R motor. So we are here with Dave, we call Dave the wizard, a lot of people call him the wizard, so you guys know this is my 250R motor and I've been through the ringer with it man. We have done, you know, it was an entire motor build and I just hit quite a few pitfalls and uh, some of it was embarrassing and I met Dave and Dave, you know, I wish I had met you long ago because you would have saved me a lot of headaches. Um, but, you know, Dave said a lot of stuff to me that really makes a lot of sense. And it seems like the more and more I'm involved with this stuff, the more and more um, I see that guys like Dave have just been through everything. And um, Dave, how long have you been working on 250R motors? I started in 85 with the liquid cooled. Okay, so you've been doing this as long as anybody in the industry. There's uh, Arlen and Rob uh, were in before I, Rob Selby and Arlen Lehman. Um, but I started right, right basically after they did. So I've been in it long enough to blow a bunch of stuff up and learn what not to do. <laughs> that's a, so and that's not, the truth. That's the truth. You, you got to break a few eggs to make an omelet. And that's, you know, that's the whole thing is you've been having some problems with getting this girl and we're going to, we're going to get that, we're going to get past that. And hopefully I can show you some of the techniques and things that I do show your subscribers, you know, and the people watching this video you know, how to get from point A to point B without having so many problems. Right, so that's really what, what it's all about is trying to teach everybody and give everybody a piece of the pie and knowledge, not everything, but enough to get everybody to the track and uh, come back without blowing up like I did twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have, this is my motor, we are going to be doing an assembly. Well, Dave's gonna be assembling it. Uh, he's got a number of tricks and everything. He watched my assembly video and there's a number of things that he says he would do differently than me. Uh, maybe differently than you would and it doesn't mean that I'm right or he's wrong or you're right or you're wrong There's just different ways to skin a cat yeah. and uh, Dave's been doing this a lot longer than probably any of us And uh, I would imagine you've got some good tricks up your sleeve to show us Well, that's what I'd, I'd like to show you some of the ways that I get past a lot of the problems Because when I watched your first video, I was like man There's a lot of things that if I could share with you It'd be so much easier to get from point A to point B a lot quicker right. and so I'm gonna share those with you today with uh, with the audience out there and just to try and help you guys learn how to get these things together without having to fight it so much. Because the more you fight something as you put it together, the more likely you are to make a mistake. Right. If you can put it together easy, then your mind keeps focusing on getting it together easily. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna present you with your own Dave Moore stand for putting these things together. All right, let's check it out. All right. This thing holds a motor in the different positions that it takes to easily put one together. And I, I designed this after putting together thousands of different motors and fighting with like wood blocks and stuff or whatever little assembly that I could rig up. And then one day I'm just like, man, there's gotta be an easier way of going about doing this. And I know the two positions that I like a motor to be in when I'm working on it. And this provides both those positions. So uh, I've been selling a bunch of these and people are like, oh, how do you put a motor together? So I thought this would be a great opportunity. Show you how it works. Show everybody out there how it works. And then I can just tell everybody that buys one, go watch your video, you know, <laughs> clicks. Comment and subscribe below, okay? I need to keep this guy <laughs> oh, going. Man, he's doing my job for me. <laughs> Feed the algorithm. <laughs> okay, so first thing that we need to do though is, and this is where I start with the motor. I need to get the crank into the cases. Now, this is another tool that I built. I built this originally so that I would have something to take to the dunes to both pull the cases apart and put them back together again. I like it so much I don't even use the tools that I have at the shop here and you'll see in a second how this works. We're going to place this on here just like this and put three bolts into corresponding holes. Set it up, feed the crank into this bearing. that and take this and screw it onto the end of the crankshaft and then I'm just going to tighten this up and this will pull the crank into the bearings. 
And the reason why this is important, why you would never want to put this up like in a press and press this down is as you're pressing on this, you're going to actually be pressing the crank together. You're sandwiching the crank. And so that can throw off your alignment between the pin. I see people do this all the time and then they'll send me a crank in because they're like, oh, it's vibrating a bunch. Well, it's because now it is extremely out of truth. So you want to pull the crank in to the cases. And when you reach the end of it, you'll know. Loosen this up. And now our crank is fully seated in the bearings. Now, here's where we start using the stand. So we're gonna take this and we're going to set it down like this. Now this is where a lot of people have a lot of trouble and like you said, Michael, in the beginning of this, a lot of people do these different ways. I'm gonna show you the way that I do it. And if you like it and it's helpful, great. If you've got a different way of doing it, well, the biggest thing is, is to do it so that you get the motor together and you don't have any problems. And so I found an easy way of going about doing that. So one of the biggest things is getting the transmission into the cases if you're going to do this is what's called a stator side assembly so we bring this back up where it's setting up it's now back in its uh, vertical position and then i'm going to grab the transmission and i'm going to place the transmission in it and i'll show you how i do that so something i wanted to mention is that there's a lot of people that go back and forth in the industry about how a crank should fit the bearings. There's people that are like, oh man, you should be able to just slide it in, or you know, um, it slides in on one side. And I can tell you this from being in the industry as long as I have and working on OEM cranks when they were still OEM, they are always an interference fit. The cranks are always going to fit tightly into the bearings. Now, is that correct or incorrect? Well, it goes back and forth on your school of thought. If you believe that this crank needs to float back and forth a little bit as the motor is running to keep it out of a bind, then obviously you would want it loose on both ends. But the way that Honda designed it, it is an interference fit on both sides. And that's the way that I like to see them. Have I run motors that are loose on uh, one side or the other? Yeah, I've done that. Do they work? Yeah, some of my best race motors do work that. But honestly, the way that Honda made it was it was an interference fit. So if we're gonna do it the way that Honda set it up, it'll be a pull, it'll be pulled in to both sides. Okay, so once you get the crank into the uh, into the housing, then you're gonna wanna lean the motor over like this. And we've got our transmission shafts with all the shims on them and everything. Mesh them together, they'll lock together like that, bring it up. Slide it in, lay it back over. Now the transmission's in. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the center shift fork. By the way, a lot of people always get really nerved out about seeing this on the center shift forks, but you'll see this on brand new motors. This is a little bit wide and it tips a little bit. So don't let this freak you out. If you've got a, if you've got a worn edge into it, but a little discoloration, that's that's completely normal, okay? So, bring this up here. We're gonna put it in. Then we're gonna take the pin, and we're gonna put it in. We're not gonna lock the pin into the case yet because the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to bring the shift drum around. We're gonna set it in here, lift up on that fork until it goes in. Now, we're going to lock this front pin in. Okay, so now this, which is the center shift fork, is in the center groove, and this pin is all locked in. Next thing we're going to do, take the left shift fork, and I'm going to drop it down inside of here. And when I get to a certain point, I'm going to take and put the pin through it because that helps me get it aligned. 
So now it's right over the top of that hole. I'm gonna take the upper one, lift it up a little bit. Now both of these are both in their pin positions, slot positions, and then I'm gonna slide that through it and now the transmission's in and together. Now, Dave, I'm noticing as you're doing this, you're not using any assembly lube. Do you recommend using assembly lube? Or? If you've got a completely dry transmission that you've like just taken out of uh, like an ultrasonic or it's been somehow chemically cleaned, if you put it back in and you start the motor up, even with oil in the bottom end, it's just gonna sound rattly as all get out. So if you've got something completely dry, then I would put some assembly lube on it. These gears have already been run and there's some oil left over on them. So it's not, a, it's not something that's gonna concern me. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in. Um, even if somebody does put back one back together and it is dry and you fire it up and it's, it's just, I mean, it'll sound rattly like this. You've got the oil in the bottom end. Lay the bike up over on this side for a little bit and then bring it back down and fire it up and it'll be fine. So we've got out the OEM center case gasket, which these OEM gaskets are the best, okay? I, I actually cut a bunch of my own gaskets for it, which work really good, but for what you can get on the market, OEM is the best. Just place this over here and Drop it down on there. Got everything ready to go now. So the next thing that we're gonna do is take this and we will fit this over the top of this and down on it, just like that. Now I'm gonna use the same tool that I used to pull the crank into this side to go ahead and pull this down on top of it. So we're gonna use the same tool that I built. Come over here. Tighten this down. All right, get this in here. And thread it in to the end of the crank. And then hold the connecting rod and start pulling it down. And get to a point where You want to watch your cases when you're pulling them together. Make sure that the cases are coming down evenly, and these cases are. If they start coming down on one end more than another, just take a rubber mallet and give it a little tap here on the, the back uh, engine mount. Because normally what will happen is this will come down, this end will come down a little bit faster if you're having a little bit of bind. And so you just want to give it a little tap right here and it'll level it back out and then you can take it down. So just make sure it's coming down even. And you're just gonna take it all the way down. And the cases are together now. And we take this out. Make sure the crank is still turning smoothly, and it is. And the transmission. And that gets this bottom in together. Now the next thing that we'll do is turn this around and put all the center case bolts into it. Putting a little bit of lube on this before you put it in there is really not a bad idea at all. So that's for the counterbalancer, correct? Yeah, that's the counterbalancer bearing holder is what it is. And this is an aftermarket one. Yes, yeah. I'll just, I'll throw a few of these in and you can get some, uh... Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is put on this flattened O-ring right here and then take this and I think this looks like, this was made by Gil Durbin, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, he makes awesome, these collars and stuff. He's a great research, resource for that. So that's set in place. Now what we're gonna do is turn the motor around and lay it back over. So we're gonna put the Kickstarter assembly all back together. Honda made it really simple. If there's an alignment with some parts, they're gonna put, can you see this little dot right here? That little dot? Mm -hmm. Okay, and you see that one right there? That means that these two things, when they go together, 
have to be aligned.